So when you look at lines of symmetry, you will see them in all of the flowers and a lot of times in the general pattern. But everyone does these shapes fairly differently, right? It's not made by machines, it's made by hand. And they always throw in something that's not symmetrical, like this little rose hip here. And that's what gives it its kind of like artistic flair. This also is symmetrical within itself, but it is offset. And this is not straight. It leans towards that side. So you get more weight this way. And this is part of the whole art of the symmetry of Métis and woodland flowers and beadwork. Now you're gonna use a mirror on your pattern to check if you've got a line of symmetry or not. So I'm gonna draw a white line on this and then you'll see what I mean. So the mirror actually reflects when you angle it properly, the mirror will reflect and that's how you know it's a line of symmetry. So you can see this line of symmetry here. And of course you can guess that the next line of symmetry is going to be here, right? But there are also lines of symmetry within petals, but because you've got usually um, not even sized beads, seed beads come in different shapes and sizes, especially the vintage ones like these ones. So when you go within a petal, sometimes you don't end up with the symmetry that you would expect. So this petal over here, most petals have kind of like a heart shape. And usually you strive to have the same amount of beads on one side as the other, but it doesn't always work out that way because you are not a machine, you're a beater. So when you go on it, when you go like this, now you see that that heart that we're looking at right now has that perfect symmetry, right? Um, but the truth is, if you look at it, when you people first made CGI characters, um, there was something off about them. And what was off about them was that the computer made the faces com completely symmetrical. And when you do that, it spooks people. Um, humans are wired for symmet symmetrical faces because symmetrical faces tell us that a person is healthy generally. But when the faces are too symmetrical, we actually don't buy it. So this is a good example of where the beater couldn't quite make the symmetry work because they went a little wonky over here. They overfilled the bead here, right? So, and you'll see that as you get closer and closer to beadwork, it's less and less perfect. And that's fine because when you zoom out, it's gorgeous. And what you know is that it is handmade and hand making it and being able to hand make things is really important. Having said that, your patterns absolutely, to start out with, should be symmetrical. All of these are from the same book by uh, Gabriel Dumont Institute and Gregory Schofield and those guys made it. So you will notice that on a five petal flower, you are going to find the symmetry will not be exactly the same if you go through. See how it doesn't really work that way? So if you wanna find a line of symmetry, you'll actually find it within a petal. So if I go like this and I bisect the petal, see, there's my line of symmetry. So there's actually a line of symmetry going from inside each petal. So if you're creating a pattern for a flower with an odd number, this is how you do it. Here's your button, right? So if you want it to be a five petaled flower, this part, the around, needs to be divisible by one, two, three, four, five. Generally, what I'll do is I will just go three beads in the middle, one out, one out, because that's what I'm going from. So that means that I'm going four beads, four beads, four beads, four beads, that's 20 beads around. If you do 20 beads around, then you can go above every fifth bead and go out one, two, three. So then you, that would be one, count over one, two, three, go up from that fifth bead. One, two, three, go up from that fifth bead and go one, two, three beads out. This is how you preserve symmetry. And then again, you're gonna count over one, two, three. Oh, here's 
that fifth one, I'm gonna go out from the fifth one, one, two, three beads. And you keep doing that. One, two, three out, one, two, three out. And if you do this, and you can do it with a contrasting color or the same color, but if you do this, it will make your petals really symmetrical in the middle. And even if they get wonky on the end, it won't really matter if you get the symmetry right in the middle. Um, but traditionally what you would do is you would go around the outside of a thing. You would bead this, 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 and this after you've beaded your center and then fill in the beads. And you would use paper and sew over and rip it out, which I think is what I taught you guys the first time. But you can just go from the inside out and freehanded if you're feeling brave. Or you can just trace this and go and do one petal at a time and then fill in later. So you always like finish the outsides of the petals before you do anything else. And don't worry if your edges look wobbly because once you stuff the beads in there, it'll be fine. And you will notice on the picture of the Métis beadwork that all of the beads follow this pattern where they go from here, they go out in like circles, right? They're never filled straight. That's kind of a planes thing. We don't really do that. The only time you see it straight is up here. And really every beater has their own kind of ways of doing fill. You'll see some straight here just for variety. But the traditional way of doing woodland flowers is to do like the outside and work your way in. And that's, uh, that's that.